This is Redmi's new flagship phone, the Redmi K80 Pro. And from an expectations perspective, I'd say it's a bit of a mixed bag. There's some good, there's some bad. For example, like the GT7 Pro, the K80 Pro also happens to be the cheapest way for you to get your hands on a Snapdragon 8 Elite. Now, on the other hand, we've had Redmi make some claims on Chinese social media, like the fact that they are changing strategy, yada, yada, yada. Long story short, what they are essentially saying is, Xiaomi prices went up, so Redmi prices are going up too. And then we have the new Redmi branding, insane benchmark claims, some premium features being thrown in, and one very surprising finding that really blew me away. Something that I honestly did not expect from Redmi. So in today's video, I'ma break all that down for you. If this is your first time here, or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash, you're watching C4E Tech. Roll that intro. <laughs> Let me first start by walking you through the unboxing experience. This is not your typical Redmi box. In fact, the white and silver mix here kind of reminds me more of Oppo than Redmi. Is it just me or can you also see that similarity? Now here's the new Redmi logo. It's all caps now. Guys, I picked up the 16512 SKU. The base is 12256. Let me go ahead and cut through that plastic. Peeling it off and opening up the box, here's a white insert, once again with that new branding. It houses a SIM tool, a quick start guide, and a solid colored TPU case. And nope, this is not a defect on the case. It's an opening for the secondary mic on the camera array that helps with audio zoom. Okay, we now get to the K80 Pro itself. I picked up the green colorway, which I feel is the best looking skew this time. Redmi also offers this phone in black and white, and barring that, there are the Lamborghini special editions in green and gray. At first glance, the design here it feels more CV than the K-series, doesn't it? Now, I don't mean that as a negative. If anything, it makes me like the phone more. Now, for example, this off-center camera array, it kind of gives you more space to put your finger on. That is, if you have big hands and if you're right-handed, obviously. Now, the bottom part with that new Redmi logo, it's got a matte finish and a frosty pattern. Looks pretty cool. The matte finish ensures this part is very resistant to fingerprints. And while the top part is glossy, the metal sides are again matte. Talking about the sides, there's pretty much nothing to the left and the top. The power and volume keys reside to the right. And at the bottom, here's where we find the USB Type-C port, the primary microphone and speaker, along with the SIM tray. Now the earpiece does pull double duty as a secondary speaker to provide stereo audio. And we also get an IR blaster that's hidden in the camera array. Talking about this camera array, what do you guys think about this design? To me, it kind of looks like MagSafe turned 90 degrees. Can you see it? Now the display on this phone is flat. It's a 6.67 inch OLED panel from TCL that's been covered by Xiaomi's second gen Dragon Crystal Glass. Now this is a 120 Hz LTPS panel, no variable refresh, but it does have a 2K resolution, meaning pixels are densely packed the pixel density is a very impressive 526 ppi, so text, images, everything's very sharp. And the bezels also look almost symmetric, though if you look closer the bottom, it's slightly thicker. From a brightness perspective, the claim 3200 nits, that's for HDR, there is support for both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. Now Redmi also claims a global brightness peak of 1800 nits. But in my testing, the results were a little different. 650 nits under manual mode, 850 nits with sunlight mode on, and 1100 nits under auto. So is Redmi lying? Trying to find an answer to that, I started looking at coverage in China, and I noticed a few people saying this. Now, if you get the phone from a black screen for about a second or two, it does output 1800 nits before quickly dropping down to 1100. Now, I was not able to replicate this on my unit, but let's say that is true. Even then, I, I don't really like this 1800 nit claim just for a second or two. I mean, come on guys. What do, you, what, what do you think? Do you find this misleading? Would you call this misleading marketing or do you think it's acceptable? Let me know. Now moving on, under low light, the K80 Pro has DC light dimming, so it should be pretty good for those sensitive to OLED flicker. Also, Redmi's ensure this panel, it's usable when the hands are wet which makes sense given this phone does have an IP68 rating. And it's not just the panel, even the fingerprint scanner underneath can be used when your hands are wet, since it happens to be of the ultrasonic variety. Now, it's not one of those crazy scan your fingerprint in three presses kind of scanner. 
yet it is very fast, very accurate and quite ergonomically placed. Now while the display is flat, the back isn't. There's a 3D curve on all four sides and the K80 Pro is just 8.39mm thick without a huge camera bump. Also, despite the flat panel, Redmi's managed to keep the phones width under 75 millimeters. So all these add to the ergonomic factor and they make the K80 Pro very nice to hold in hand. But that said, there is still a certain heft to it given it weighs in at under 215 grams. The Lamborghini editions are slightly higher. Now, I wish it were a little lighter, but I understand given the materials used and the 6000 mAh silicon carbon battery on the inside. So from a build and design perspective, I like what Redmi has done here. Now yes, they haven't really continued on with the K70 series design language. And again, yes, the design feels closer to the CV instead. I get all that. But overall, I feel the choices Redmi has made, they've come together quite nicely. What do you think? On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate this design? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, returning back to the unboxing, which I guess I abandoned midway. Sorry guys. There is a USB Type A to Type C cable with orange accents. And finally, there's this 120 watt hypercharge adapter using which you can get that 6000 mAh battery to 50% in just 13 minutes and 100% in half an hour. On top of that, Redmi also provides wireless charging support at up to 50 watts. Good stuff. Now, yes, all that is cool, but I'm sure you're not here for that. The biggest selling point for this phone it's none of what we've seen so far. It's the fact that the K80 Pro is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Elite. While my Antutu numbers aren't as impressive as Redmi's claims, there's still nothing to scoff at. And guys, here's the part that really surprised me. After all the 8 Elites that I've covered, I went into stress testing this phone with a bit of resignation because so far, outside of the Red Magic and to a lower extent the ROG Phone 9 Pro, most brands have struggled with heat and throttling on the 8 Elite. And Xiaomi or Redmi is usually the one that suffers the most. The Xiaomi 15 Pro, for example, wouldn't even finish the test and it did get quite toasty. Now, Redmi. They claim they've used a 5400mm Squire 3D dual loop ice cooling system here to help with thermals and get the best sustained performance possible. But that is a claim and in this video we've already seen how Redmi's claims do set up unreal expectations. Now imagine to my surprise when the K80 Pro did exactly what they claimed. Almost 70% stability meaning after 20 minutes of continuously being pushed, it lost only 30% of its peak performance. And there's no cheating with the peak performance numbers either. And here's the kicker. The display only reached 43 degrees and the back 44. So the K80 Pro is amongst the coolest 8 elites out today. Also notice how the heat's been evenly distributed. So Redmi claimed and Redmi backed up the damn claim. Color me impressed. Barring this, Redmi has also included their own D1 chip for super resolution and frame generation, which gamers should find interesting. Now the 8 Elite here is paired with 12 or 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM and 256, 512 gigs or up to a terabyte of fast UFS 4.0 storage. That coupled with a new HyperOS 2 built on top of Android 15 makes everything very snappy and responsive. The new animations are very fluid and more importantly consistent. The AI integration, we've already seen that on the Xiaomi 15 Pro and the Xiaomi Pad 7 Pro, so I'm not gonna get into all that again. But to simply say, stuff like AI Eraser and AI generated video wallpapers are all available and work well. As for updates, it's not uncommon for brands to not mention them during the Chinese launch, and Redmi hasn't. But given the K70 Pro and the recent Note lineup are all getting 4 years of Android version updates with 5 years of security patches, the K80 Pro should at least get the same, if it launches globally. Okay, now it's time to talk about the cameras. The primary is the Omnivision Light Fusion 800, a 50 megapixel 1 by 1.55 inch sensor paired with an f1.6 lens that's optically stabilized. We've seen it on other phones in the past and here too, it continues to perform well. Images turned out quite nice, even under low light. Now, 3 second dynamic photos are available here with 1.5 seconds of footage being shot before and after the image has been taken. Next, we have a 32 megapixel Samsung KD1 sensor paired with an f2.2 fixed focus ultra wide, so no macros via this. And then we have another Samsung sensor, the JN5, that's paired with an f2 floating lens. This one's optically stabilized as well and provides you 2.5x optical zoom. The floating lens part of it allows you to focus as close as 10 centimeters, so you can get telephoto macro shots that look like this. And the regular zoom shots, they were pretty good too, given this is the same setup from the more expensive Xiaomi 15. 
There's also AI telescope zoom which gets triggered at 20x. You can turn it off if you don't want it. When on, it does a fair job of getting more detail out of the image. From a video perspective, you can shoot 8K24 via the primary. Sadly, 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 the EIS jitter issue continues, not just with 8K, even with 4K60. It's also worth noting that though the primary and the telephoto both support 4K60, you can't switch between them when shooting. Now flipping over to the front, the 20 megapixel selfie camera, it did well for both regular selfies as well as portraits, skin tones were on point, the dynamic range good, and the edge detection accurate. Selfie video though tops out at 1080-60 and once again, the EIS jitter ruins it. The Redmi K80 Pro in China starts at $36.99 RMB, which converts to about $510 US or 43,000 rupees Indian. Now to me, if Redmi ever got around to fixing that EIS jitter, I feel the K80 Pro, it would make for an excellent all-round value phone. But till Redmi actually does that, like most K-series phones, the K80 Pro still is catering to the same performance-focused buyer who wants to save a little bit of money. Now, that's not really a bad thing, is it? So what do you guys think about the K80 Pro? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Ash, out.